to show you how to turn a window that looks like this into this. When we built this house a few years ago, I opted out of the trim package because it was going to cost too much money. Well, in this video, I'll be showing you how to get the farmhouse craftsman style look, but really we're just dressing up the drywall to create an illusion of a wood cased window. Hey there, Christy here. Welcome. Here I'm saving money by building things around my house myself and just learning along the way. And on this channel, I hope to inspire you that if this ordinary mom with zero experience can build simple things, then you can too, while using simple plans and simple tools and keeping things at a fraction of retail cost. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'm starting by measuring the width and the height of my window opening. I have a hard time getting an accurate read when the tape measure is this way. I don't know if that says an eighth or a quarter. You probably saw this in my countertop video, but I actually used the tape measure as part of my measurement because tape measures are usually three inches long. So here I'm at 34 inches and a quarter. To help you visualize what the measurements will be for your new stool, when installing your two vertical frames, which are your one by fours, place them an eighth of an inch away from the window opening. This creates what's called a reveal. Then the new stool will come out a half inch past the vertical frame. So before you cut, just make sure you take into account the half inch overhang on both sides as well as the 1 8 reveal on both sides. Okay, so my goal going into this was to frame out these windows without removing the existing blinds and without removing the stool and apron on the bottom. However, I reached out to you guys on Instagram stories and asked if I should keep the stool and frame how it is or if I should replace it. And you guys voted to replace it, so I listened to you and that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting out the seams of caulk all along the apron and stool. Okay, so now that the seams are cut, I grabbed my chisel and mallet and I pried off the apron. Then to pry off the stool, I needed something a little bit stronger and bigger, so I got a crowbar and pried it right off. Next, I took measurements of the windowsill and I went down to the garage, marked where I needed to cut, grabbed my jigsaw and cut out the opening for where the stool will push up against the window. And it fits. Moving on to the header, we've got a one by two, a one by six, another one by two, and a one by three. I'm gonna go ahead and attach these boards with one and a quarter inch nails through the bottom, through the top, and then through the very top. I finally went and bought me a big old clamp because not only does it serve as an extra set of hands, but it also keeps things secure and tight for when I'm nailing. So here I'm just attaching the one by twos to the one by six. The one by six will run flush with the two vertical frames. Then the one by twos will be cut an inch longer, creating just a half inch overhang on both sides. This one by three will be the very top piece. I'm going to attach it to the one by two. Here I'm ensuring it has a half inch overhang on both sides before I nail. So your one by three will be cut one inch longer than your one by twos to create a half inch overhang on both sides as well. Okay, so this is ready to go up on the wall. And I'm using two inch nails to fasten this to the wall. I noticed curtain rod holes here, but I'm gonna cover it with spackle. The new apron lines up flush with the two vertical frames and creating a half inch overhang with the stool above it. And again, using two inch nails, we're fastening the apron and the stool. Now that everything's nailed, we're ready to prep for paint. First, I'm starting with spackling. So when I removed the stool, I caused slight damage to the drywall, but no worries, it's an easy fix. Smoothing it out with a putty knife, it goes on pink and it dries white. And using the same spackle, I'm moving on to the nail holes, filling all nail holes so when it dries, I'll sand them and you'll never even see that they were there. Dries quickly, as you can see here, now we're ready to sand. Here I'm just using a sanding block of 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sanding the entire surface, removing any texture from the drywall, and then smoothing over all the nail holes. Okay, so now I'm ready to caulk all seams and gaps. This caulking gun is actually pretty handy. I just discovered the bells and whistles that's attached to it. Okay, so I work in small sections. I run a bead of caulk and then I take a wet finger and smooth out the line. I just keep a small bowl of water next to me with a wet washcloth inside the bowl and then I keep a dry washcloth for any excess caulk that gets on your finger and you need to wipe it off. I'm not really looking for perfection here. I'm just filling all the gaps and seams and everything's gonna be painted white. I'm learning that ultra pure white semi-gloss paint is great to use for trim and crown molding because you'll never have a problem matching it in terms of future touch-ups. I'm keeping a wet cloth handy in case I get any paint on the blinds. Okay, so is this something that you could see yourself doing to your windows? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. 
Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos just like this. I post a new one every week. Details are in the description box in case you miss anything. As always, if I can inspire just one person to pick up a drill, then these videos are worth it. Keep tackling those projects and we'll talk soon. One window down, about 15 more to go.